Hello, I'm Dr. Tracy Wang, an endocrine surgeon here in the Department of Surgery at the Medical College of Wisconsin. Thank you for joining us in our ongoing series on programs and innovations in our department. Today, I'm joined by Dr. John Gould, who is a minimally invasive general surgeon here in our department. Dr. Gould is a native of Wisconsin and did his, completed his medical degree and general surgery residency at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. He then completed his fellowship in minimally invasive surgery at The Ohio State University in Ohio. Uh, he, was, he went back to Madison uh, for several years before he was recruited to the Medical College of Wisconsin in 2011 as the Division Chief of General Surgery and the Alonzo P. Walker Chair in General Surgery. Since that time, um, he's led a robust growth of our division, which now has soon to be soon six, to be six yep. minimally invasive trained um, general surgeons. Welcome, Dr. Gould. Thank you, Dr. Wang. Dr. Gould is going to be talking to us today about gastroesophageal reflux disease, commonly referred to as GERD. Um, so what exactly is GERD? It's a great question, and I, I think it's um, people are confused because there's a lot of terms that are used very often to describe it. So GERD stands for gastroesophageal reflux. It's also known as acid reflux. Sometimes it's known by the symptoms that this condition causes, like heartburn. Um, people can get all kinds of different symptoms uh, from this condition besides heartburn. Asthma, chronic cough, sore throat, um, difficulty swallowing, all of these things can be from this condition. But basically GERD is a condition where the sphincter muscle at the end of the esophagus doesn't work like it's supposed to and acid and other caustic digestive enzymes can get out of the stomach and into the esophagus and beyond where it can cause all kinds of problems. So you mentioned that there's a lot of symptoms that are really common for people to have. So how would you know if your symptoms are related to GERD? Um, another great question. So um, heartburn, that sensation of kind of burning behind your breastbone, uh, everybody's had heartburn at one time or another. Usually things that trigger that in anybody are things like you know, red sauce, pasta, red wine, things like that. Um, that's a really common symptom, and that's usually related to acid reflux. Um, sometimes regurgitation or the kind of sour taste in your mouth from uh, stomach contents refluxing into your esophagus is um, a common symptom for folks, and that is usually GERD as well. When it gets to be other kinds of symptoms, um, some of what we call extra esophageal symptoms, we used to call them atypical symptoms before we understood how common it is for GERD to cause things like a sore throat and coughing and hoarseness and asthma. Um, the problem is that there's a lot of different reasons for some of these symptoms and it's not always GERD. Um, and kind of figuring that out can be a little bit difficult. And it's something um, that uh, sometimes requires some tests to sort out, um, but it can be a challenge for some patients to arrive at that diagnosis. So what are those tests that um, a, a doctor might do to see if a patient has GERD? So um, a lot of times if a patient comes in and it really sounds like GERD, if you're getting heartburn when you eat too late at night or when you eat certain things and it's really bothering you, then some physicians will just prescribe an acid reduction medication. These are available either with prescription or over the counter. And if your symptoms get better on an appropriate medical therapy, that's actually in some ways a diagnostic test and you don't need additional testing in that case unless things get a lot worse. Um, some people um, where it's not clear that their symptoms are from GERD might require a test like an upper endoscopy where they'll drive a really small camera down and look at the esophagus. Um, some people might need an x-ray. Uh, in cases where it's really confusing or where it's really important to make sure that the diagnosis is correct, there's other tests like um, things called pH studies and esophageal manometries, just different things that might be done. And um, It's really helpful to have um, a physician, whether it's a gastroenterologist or a, a gastrointestinal surgeon like myself, kind of guide that evaluation because uh, you can get to the right diagnosis with the fewest tests. So take home messages, if an over-the-counter or prescription medication works, that's great. And if you have ongoing symptoms, you might need to see a specialist yeah. for this. Yeah, that's okay. a good take home. And you mentioned medications. Mm -hmm. um, what, other, what, what are all the types of medications that people can have, and how do you know when medications just aren't working anymore? So there, there's an awful lot of medications available, and many of them nowadays are available over the counter without a prescription. Um, real simple things like Tums and antacids are commonly used. 
Um, people can get um, weaker acid suppression medications, which are called H2 blockers, and those are things like Zantac. Um, that's over the counter. And then people can get the more powerful acid suppression medications that are known as proton pump inhibitors. Those are medications like omeprazole or Prilosec that are also available over the counter. Um, the, the issue with the medications um, is that um, sometimes they don't completely work to control all of your symptoms. Um, and um, there's also potential side effects um, and potential uh, consequences, health consequences of taking these medications for a real long time. Um, and so when a person is on a medication um, and they're having persistent symptoms, that's a good reason to go get checked out. Um, but uh, if they're on a medication for kind of typical heartburny stuff and they're feeling pretty good, um, they're usually okay just continuing to take the meds. Are there consequences to having GERD um, long term, even if your symptoms are pretty well controlled? that people need to be aware of? Yeah, um, people who've had GERD for a really long time um, can develop a condition known as Barrett's esophagitis. And um, it's, it's something that happens in somewhere around 5% of people who have had uh, real GERD for a long time, several years or more. Um, and Barrett's is common, but it can also um, progress into something um, which uh, becomes precancerous and ultimately can become esophageal cancer in some cases. And uh, it's not that common, but there's a definite association between GERD and esophageal cancer. So as a specialist in gastroesophageal reflux disease, when do you recommend that somebody should be evaluated for surgery and consider having surgery? I think anyone who's um, made some of the easy changes, some of the lifestyle changes that we recommend, so um, you know, not eating late at night, avoiding the foods that cause you heartburn, um, kind of standard medical therapy. Um, once someone's tried those things and is at the point where they're having ongoing or persistent symptoms despite that, um, then it's time to consider surgery. Um, a lot of people will escalate their medications and that's a reasonable strategy, but uh, anybody who's on medical therapy and continuing to suffer from symptoms really should consider uh, some form of uh, anti-reflux surgical procedure. And what are those forms of surgical procedures for reflux? There, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, the operation that's been around for the longest, kind of that time-tested uh, operation, is called um, the laparoscopic Nissen fundal plication. And what that is, uh, it's a mouthful, but it's surgery done with tiny incisions. So usually about five half centimeter incisions. And we watch ourselves operate on a TV screen. And basically the problem in GERD is not that you make too much acid, it's that the valve or the sphincter at the end of your esophagus doesn't function like it's supposed to. And um, so that's where medical treatment often fails is when you have an incompetent valve and you're refluxing, sometimes even if it's not that acidic, the stuff that's coming up, it still causes all kinds of problems. And so the surgery focuses on rebuilding that valve. Um, and so a laparoscopic Nissen fundal plication is a very common operation where you kind of cinch the valve up with these tiny incisions. That's probably the most common operation that's done. There's a new and evolving treatment, which is known as the magnetic sphincter augmentation device. It's known by the trade name of Lynx. Um, that is a magnetic sphincter augmentation device. It's a device that you can actually insert around a weak sphincter and make it stronger, and it works very well for GERD. And then there's some evolving treatments um, that are still um, waiting to be kind of proven as frontline therapy. And how does a patient know which procedure is the right one for them? Um, well, that's where I come in. A lot of times I can kind of help people um, based on the nature of their symptoms, um, you know, how their esophagus functions, how bad their reflux is. Based on a variety of factors, I can kind of help guide folks to the right operation that's going to get them the relief they seek and kind of help them meet their treatment goals. A lot of people come in and already have an idea of what they want. Um, and the, the links and the, the Nissen fundal application are the two most common things that, that people get. Are there downsides to either operation for certain types of patients? Yeah, there's always downsides. Um, I think the, the downsides to the links device is that um, there's a side effect which is called dysphagia, which is where when you swallow, you can kind of feel like the food is sitting at the end of your esophagus. And, and that's pretty common early, like right after the procedure as a, as a post-operative side effect. It usually goes away 
um, but about 1% or so of people have that symptom linger, and that can be a problem for some folks. Um, with the Nissen fund application, um, the valve um, can be a little too tight sometimes, and people might feel more bloated after the surgery than they did beforehand. Um, and there's also um, a fairly low, but a real failure rate. The wrap can loosen over time in some people. It's it's 5% or less, but it does happen sometimes. And can people expect to notice relief of their symptoms pretty quickly after surgery? Yeah, um, when done properly and for the right reasons and the right patient, um, satisfaction rates with both the Lynx and the Nissen are more than 95% long-term. Um, the symptoms that people have from reflux are resolved at a very high rate. Um, people are able to get off their acid suppression medications and stay off them for the most part. So uh, people do really well. Great. And can you tell us a little bit about the program here at the Medical College of Wisconsin for patients with gastroesophageal reflux disease? I imagine you work with a team yeah. to make sure the patient is the right patient for the right procedure. Right. Yeah, no, I'd love to tell you about it. So um, I think that's a unique part of our program is um, We've got a number of providers in our division who really focus on this particular disease. We're very interested in it, and it's pretty much all of what we do. And we work collaboratively with GI medicine doctors. Um, sometimes people have GERD that affects other things like their lungs or their vocal cords. So we work collaboratively with the uh, head and neck surgeons and uh, some of the pulmonologists and different folks. Uh, and we've got a really kind of great multidisciplinary setup that allows us to really understand the patient and their disease um, and the options and really kind of tailor the treatment to them. Uh, and again, based on their treatment goals, based on a lot of other factors, we don't just do one thing. We've got a lot of different things that we might offer. And it allows us to really um, get uh, better outcomes that way. Are there other reasons why a patient should seek out a specialist like yourself for this type of surgery? Yeah, I mean, I, I think in a lot of different areas, uh, certainly in complex high-risk fields, it's been shown that people that really focus and specialize on a procedure have much better outcomes. And while GERD is common and the procedure is somewhat complex, um, some of those same advantages really apply. Uh, again, it gets down to um, just understanding um, the, the right kind of choices and the right way to do these operations. Um, there's really an art to this procedure, uh, especially the fund application. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, and part of the art translating into really good outcomes is kind of the judgment and the experience that comes with having done a lot of these, having taken care of a lot of people who've had it done and having frankly taken care of people who maybe didn't have it done so well where you had to salvage that and you learn from that experience too. So all that translates into to good outcomes for our patients, I feel. Great. Thank you very much, Dr. Gould. Great. Thank you, Dr. Wang. Um, again, thank you for joining us as we talked with Dr. John Gould, who's the Division Chief of General Surgery on gastroesophageal reflux disease.